It seems like Mario and Sonic won't be doing the Paris 2024 Olympics, as it's way past the time these kinds of games would usually come out. That made me want to take a look at the final installment of the video game Olympic crossover series, Tokyo 2020, and my video I did years ago about what I wanted in the game, thus the Return of the Breakdown series. I'll be glossing over the things I asked for in the original top 5 and tell you if I got them or not. If I got the thing, I'll put a white star next to it. If I sort of got it, I'll place a gray star next to it. But if I didn't, it will receive a black star. Here are the 5 main things I wanted, so pause if you have to read, though I also had honorable mentions. So here's the list for that as well, and again, pause if necessary. Are you pumped up? Because I got a spoiler alert for the story and gameplay, especially needed for the former. Head to the podium, as it's time to hand out some medals. Hey, I'm Owen the Fiction Boy, and this is the Top 5 Things I Want in Mario & Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games Breakdown. No forced motion controls. Since the very first game in the Crossover Sports Minigame Collection series debuted on the Wii, every console, aside from the DS, had you using motion controls in many events. Why was I worried? Because even Wii games like Sonic and the Secret Rings didn't work well due to forced motion controls. I was fine with some sports needed motion controls, and truth be told, Tokyo 2020 only had a few events that required them, while pretty much the rest of the events let you use button controls. So you can use a pro controller to play, though if you would rather use Joy-Cons with motion controls for some events, knock yourself out. Not literally though. Also, I didn't say this in the original video, but for the Rio 2016 Olympics, both the Wii U and 3DS versions removed motion controls for most of the events, so I'm glad Sega and Nintendo listened to criticism. I was also concerned about Nintendo including the Labo into the game, yet there was no Labo support, which is good since it wasn't needed. As the majority of the events let you play motion free, I shall be generous and give this wish a white star. Some unlockable characters. Like I said in the original video, nearly every Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games entry has you starting off with all characters being available from the get-go. Sure, it's nice that you have so many options right when you play for the first time, but I said I wanted us to get motivated into playing the games by unlocking the characters so that you have a reason to try out the Olympics with your favorite characters. They would have made great rewards for whenever you managed to complete the hardest of challenges. Two characters from both franchises would have been a nice way to start, and you would need to work your way up to unlock the other 20-some characters. Smash Ultimate only had 8 characters available from the beginning so you could be convinced to make progress, and yet, every character in the main roster is available, except for the guest characters you unlock in the story mode but more on that in a bit. To be frank, I probably should have said lots of instead of some unlockable characters. Oh well, I suppose I can live with giving this wish a gray star and move right along. All characters playable at all events. As you may have known for quite a while now, almost every installment in the series on every platform lets you pick from all the characters in all events. I knew the 3DS versions were an exception to that as the London 2012 games divided the characters into groups of four, and the Rio 2016 games had Mario, Sonic, and the Miis playable in all events, while the other characters were only playable in one or two events. 
but I was told the Wii U version of the Rio 2016 games had guest characters playable at one event each, though that became the case for Tokyo 2020 as well, as you have the main 20 characters in the roster, with some events having one guest character. But let's be real, the roster has been the same for a decade, excluding the guest characters, obviously. So the game would have been a lot better if we had new and unlockable characters. At the very least, the guest characters should have been playable in all events, though with the series being over, that ain't happening. I guess I'll once again be kind and give this wish a gray star and deal with it. A story with actual cutscenes and voice acting. The campaign, or story mode, is the main thing for solo players in the series ever since the Olympic Winter Games on the DS, and something that would have made the story in Tokyo 2020 shine brighter than the others is giving the characters voices in cutscenes that actually feel like movies. You know, as great as the intro cutscenes in the console games. I especially wanted that since for some odd reason, Sega didn't follow the show-don't-tell rule in Sonic Forces and Team Sonic Racing, as they thought tell-don't-show would be better, and they were wrong. This story further proved my point as the tale of Mario, Sonic, Bowser, and Eggman being trapped in the Tokyo 64 was told in text boxes akin to the adventure mode from Mario Tennis Aces. And that's not the only similarity between the two campaigns. At least with Sonic Forces and Team Sonic Racing, there's more gameplay than reading. But with Tokyo 2020 going vice versa, it makes the story rather boring. And stories are supposed to be the opposite. I can't let this slide, so I'm afraid this wish will be getting a black star. So for the honorable mentions, I'll just quickly gloss over whether my wishes came true or not and tell you what color stars they will receive. Play with up to 8 players. Locally, 4 players. Online, 8 players. Even though there is lag. Grey star. Run at 60 FPS. Yep, the game is at its most powerful frame rate possible. Gameplay and menus. White Star Tournament Mode Non-existent. You can't make tourneys to prove you're the best athlete ever or anything like that. Black Star DLC Packs, like in Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros. Also non-existent. You get everything that's in the base game and no free updates or paid add-ons. Black Star An even amount of Olympic events and dream events. I know I asked this in the original video, though with times changing, your answer may have two, but between the Olympic and dream events, which do you prefer? I still think most of you say the latter. The dream events take the Olympic events and spice them up in the worlds of Mario and Sonic. In every game in the series, there tends to be more Olympic than dream events, and I thought if there was an absolutely equal balance between the two types of events, it could be the best crossover franchise ever, though I'm afraid it's more likely one of the worst because of how lackluster the final entry in the series turned out. At the time being, Mario Odyssey and Sonic Forces were the latest entries in both main series, and while we did get one event each from both games with an extra one, taking place in a Japanese manner, that's literally it. Those are the only three, yes, three, dream events. However, this game did get 10 events from the 1964 Tokyo Olympics, with the Mario and Sonic characters in their original 8-bit and 16-bit sprites. Despite this, you only have 8 characters to choose from for these events, 
So if you wanted to see Wario in 8-bit sprites or Shadow in 16-bit sprites officially made by Nintendo and Sega here, too bad, so sad. Also, even after adding those 10 retro events with the 3 dream events all together, that's 13 unique events against over 20 Olympic events. Well, it might not quite be a 50-50 ratio, I still think 54-46 is better than, let's say, 75-25, so this last wish will get a gray star. Now we'll see what the final outcome of this whole breakdown is. So out of the 5 main wishes I had in the original video, 1 wish came completely true, 3 wishes I somewhat got, and 1 wish did not come true whatsoever. So these are some relatively average results. And for the honorable mentions, I did somewhat get one of my smaller wishes with another completely coming true, and sadly, the other two not coming true at all, with the overall results being pretty bad there. And if you take these two lists together, the results are fairly average. This breakdown may not have ended up getting a great outcome like the first one, but I hope you still enjoyed the return of this series. And let's hope Mario and Sonic aren't done with doing crossovers, even if they are done participating in the Olympics. Still need more fiction? Then please give this video a like, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications. Also comment below and follow me on Instagram for teasers and thumbnail previews of videos to come in the future. Thanks for watching, see you again soon, and goodnight-o!